The drug sodium valproate is widely used as an effective treatment for epilepsy in our region. But for pregnant women, it can cause serious side effects. In the past, many mothers took it completely unaware of the serious mental and physical damage it was doing to their unborn children. In this exclusive investigation, Tara Welsh reveals how the authorities were fully aware of the danger this drug presented, but deliberately chose not to inform pregnant patients. Janet and her son spend a lot of time walking by the estuary near their home in Preston. The sound of the birds helped to calm down Philip's anxiety disorder. I was uh, diagnosed with uh, epilepsy, stress-related epilepsy, and um, it's, it's, really, it's really hard for me to, um, it's really hard to, um, it, it, yeah, it's hard for me to describe the symptoms, but I know it's, it's really, really difficult to live with. When Janet was pregnant with Philip, she was prescribed the drug sodium valproate. She has epilepsy and the pills were meant to control the seizures, but the powerful chemicals that protected her health damaged her sons. In fact, both of Janet's sons have struggled with neurological problems and disabilities since birth. They have fetal valproate syndrome and are completely dependent on mum. I'm 25 now and symptoms are, um... I can't concentrate for them. Mm -hmm. um, I've the uh, I've got when I, when I go outside, my social interaction is zero, um, and um, and I'm very apprehensive with um, uh, going anywhere really. Like Philip, around twenty thousand children in the UK and thousands more around the world are believed to have fetal valproate syndrome after being exposed to the powerful drug valproic acid in the womb. We know from our research that uh, children who are exposed to sodium valproate can be affected uh, physically, um, they can be affected mentally, and they can be affected psychologically. Since sodium valproate was launched under various brand names in the 1960s, it's estimated that tens of thousands of pregnant women around the world have taken it. Many, like Janet and her friend Emma, say they were not made aware of the risks. Nothing about my doctor. Um, he didn't even tell me really to an effect that I had epilepsy to start with. Um, when I got my first prescription, there, there was no warnings in the boxes at that point. I mean, we're talking 83, 84, um, so there was nothing for me at all. My husband and I questioned the midwives, questioned neurologists, and to just be told, take this medicine, it's the best to control your seizures. That's great to control the seizures, but the baby. After their children were born with disabilities, Janet and Emma set up a charity in 2013 that aims to ensure warnings are prominently displayed on the packaging of all sodium valproate drugs. Partly as a result of their campaign in 2016, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency recommended that warning labels should be featured on all valproate containing medicines. GPs must only prescribe the drug to women of childbearing age as a last option after explaining all the risks. But why has it taken 50 years to get the warning out? In the UK, the government regulates what information is provided to patients. And according to Emma and Janet, the government knew about the dangers of the drug as far back as 1973. They discovered the evidence deep in the National Archives. There you go. Uh, that, statement, that statement similar to that proposed by ICI could be included on all relevant data sheets, but not on packaging inserts. So there would be no danger of the patients themselves seeing it. If they hadn't have made this decision? Yeah. You'd have been warned. I'd have been warned. And yeah. probably the boys wouldn't have been armed like they yeah. were. The 20,000 affected. Yeah. There wouldn't be that today. No. It's an extraordinary scandal. Since the very start of its licensing in this country, there was a knowledge of risk and yet a decision taken to hide that risk from mothers. 
uh, a totally sort of uh, paternalistic approach that uh, mothers might worry about it. Well, of course, mothers have a right to know. In a statement, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency said... At the time, according to clinical practice, it was for the doctor to decide how much information a patient was given about their medicine. Since then, the need for patients to be fully informed about their medicine has been underpinned by legislation. Over the last year, almost 200 babies in the UK have been born with sodium valproate syndrome. Despite efforts to raise awareness, many pharmacists are still issuing the drug in generic packaging with no warnings. The fact that women are still not being made fully aware of the risk is particularly alarming because among the affected families there's growing fear that fetal valproate syndrome is actually being passed on through the genes from one generation to the next. Three generations of the same family here today in Kirby, a grandma, two grown-up daughters and their kids. Fetal valproate syndrome has dominated their lives. It's because I took that medication. That's why my kids haven't got a normal life. And they struggle every single day of their life to fit in and do things. And one of my kids have tried to couldn't cope and try to hang themselves. Sue took the drug Epilim throughout her pregnancies and later discovered that it had left all of her children with mental disabilities. Now her daughters are worried that their children have inherited the syndrome too. I've got two children, both have got dyslexia. My daughter's got dyslexia and dyscalculus and she's in special <coughs> needs school. My little boy's nine. He's got dyslexia, learning difficulties, a bowel condition, sensory issues, memory problems. Until now, those suspicions have not been deemed credible. But we've obtained the results of a major scientific project in South Korea, which actually supports the idea that the drug can harm successive generations. The experiment carried out on mice indicates that sodium valproate can travel through DNA and afflict successive generations with mental health problems. The findings are being carefully considered by the government and have already triggered concern amongst experts on fetal valproate syndrome. That was the first bit of evidence that we had in any species that potentially this can be carried on to the next generation. Before this paper came out, we just didn't know. We had no evidence that it was going to be something that was an issue. And we were still learning about the longer term effects on the individual who'd been exposed directly to the drug. This is something now that needs to be looked at as quickly as possible to give families some reassurance. How extraordinarily distressing this must be for the families affected the knowledge that this is now within the dna of that family and potentially uh, transferable from generation to generation the transgenerational legacy of fetal valproate syndrome could potentially remain with families for centuries leading to calls for the government to fund a care package to help those affected the care package is more important because of the transgeneral link now and um, the fact that our grandchildren could be affected you know with neurodevelopment disorders possible heart malformations they need care and support my grandkids have been affected by it i've had my worry with my kids growing up i've got the worry again with my grandkids how long is it going to go on for it's it's not fair at all it's not fair it's so wrong so many people's lives have been affected and ruined.